this is the second tutorial for the game design class. This is uh, the maze game that we're going to create. Here is the basic idea. Your maze may end up looking quite a bit different than this, but these are some of the things you'll be able to do. So, for example, in this uh, maze, the character moves around, can push blocks into um, gaps to fill the holes up. And the goal is the checkered flag over there that you're trying to get to. And um, it's a, kind of a puzzle to figure out how to get over there and, and get out of the room. So for this particular level, uh, you'd have to do something uh, like this. And come up here and get the bonus and then exit the room. Okay, this level, similar sort of thing, but you've got these birds flying around that can hurt you. So if you touch one of those guys, you lose a life. But I think you can see how this level is supposed to turn out. Ah. And so each level gets more difficult, and that's kind of how it works. To get going on this project, you'll need the resource um, folder for this game. And uh, if you're in class, you can find that on the server. Go to the Hanson folder and then to Templates, Game Design, and uh, here it is. This is the um, GM Tutorial Maze Game. Grab this whole folder, drag this to your um, Windows desktop. If a window pops up and asks you if, it, if you want to do something, say no. And uh, then I'd like you to take that folder and put it into your folder that we created earlier, the H6 last name game design folder. So in there, you'll have uh, the first game folder and the maze game folder. And those are the two things we've been working on. If you're not in class, if you're doing this from home, you can find those resources on the Yo-Yo Games website, uh, www.yoyogames.com. Go to the Make tab. And then over here you can click on Tutorials. Tutorials will take you here. And then right here is the uh, Maze Games uh, stuff you can download. OK. So um, let's open up Game Maker. <clears throat> Let's save it first of all, file save. Quick tip, don't ever do save as. There's very few situations where you want to do that. It just makes multiple copies of your project and then you get confused about which one you're working on. Let's just stick with save. So I'm gonna click save. And I'm gonna make sure I go to desktop and then my folder. And then inside the maze game folder is where I'll create this game. So H6, your last name, maze. And there we go. First step in this game is to create some uh, objects, and we're going to need some sprites for that. So let's create some sprites. First sprite is SPR underscore person. Load the sprite. And again, you may uh, your computer's probably going to go to the resources for the last game we worked on. So make sure you go to desktop, your folder, and then choose the maze game folder, and then maze resources. Now we've got access to all the uh, files that we need. So for this one, um, there's a couple versions of the person. There's this one, which is a teddy bear, and then there's the person nice. We're going to use this one later, but uh, not yet. It's a different type of graphic than this one. So we st we'll start out with this one. Click open, and there it is. We want to make sure this one is transparent. Real quickly, let me explain transparency if I edit the sprite here. Uh, and I'll zoom in on it. Transparency is uh, figured out by whatever color is in, I think it's the bottom left corner here. So you see this olive green color is all around here and the olive green color is in the bottom left corner. Well, Game Maker samples this pixel in the bottom left corner and if it sees that pixel anywhere else in the image, it makes it transparent. So all of this color around the outside edge will be see-through. If you don't choose transparent, 
then it's going to look just like this. It's going to be a box with a, an olive green background. So we'll click OK. And uh, we're going to, we want this guy to be transparent, so that's fine. Let's create another sprite. This one is going to be called SPR underscore wall. And we'll edit the sprite, or load sprite. And the wall is actually the same one from last time. There's a corner wall and a horizontal wall. We'll use those later. For now, just choose the regular wall. Open. And we do not want this one to be transparent. Here's why. If I edit the sprite and we zoom in, in the bottom left corner is black. If you make it transparent, this whole section will be transparent, as will the border. And it looks strange, depending on what background you have in your game. So we want to make this one not transparent. We want all of the black to show up. Click OK. So not transparent. Click OK. Our third sprite is the goal. So we're going to say SPR underscore goal. Load sprite. And the goal is right here. It looks like a checkered flag. This one we do want to be transparent. Same reason it's got olive green around the outside. And uh, we want that to just be the flag only. So transparent. Click OK. There's our sprites. Now we'll need to create objects for these three sprites. So click on the blue sphere to create objects. The first one we'll create is the wall, SPR underscore, oh, sorry, sorry, OBJ underscore wall. And we're going to choose the wall sprite. And we're going to make this object solid. And uh, that's all that we need to do um, for this guy. Click OK, and we move on to the next object. The next object will be the next object will be the goal object. So let's name this one OBJ underscore goal. Let's choose the goal sprite. And this object is not solid. We're going to leave that alone for the, for the time being. And just uh, it's not solid and nothing added yet. Our third object is the person obj underscore person. This is the person sprite and not solid. Click OK. Okay, we're going to add some uh, events and actions to the wall, uh, to the goal and the person. So let's go back to the goal for a second. What we need to do is add a collision event. And the collision event is with a person, meaning if the uh, goal collides with a person. Um, which sounds kind of funny because the goal is not going to move, but what it means is when the person runs into the goal, here's what we want to do. And there's sort of a philosophical decision you have to make at this point. Do you want to handle all your collisions on the person or do you want to handle them all on the goal? Um, you know, there's advantages to both, but for now we're just going to stick this on the goal. Okay, what happens when a player touches the goal? Well, we want to check to see if there is another uh, room available to move to. And you find that under main one, and here's the commands for different rooms. So what we need to do to, is first of all check to see if a room exists. These uh, stop sign shaped items is are our check items. And what they'll do is um, check to see what's going on. So if I drag this out, and then if next room exists, then go to next room. And you can add a transition here. Um, so far in parallels, they don't work very well. It has to do with the way parallels talk to the graphics card. So let's just choose no effect and click OK. Now, um, what happens if there's no next room? Like they're on the last level or we haven't made a next room yet. Then we need to provide an opportunity for something else to take place. So we're going to put in an else command, which you'll find under control. Go ahead and grab the else. And then uh, in this case, we want to restart the game. So we're going to go to main two and go to game, restart game. OK. Now, real quickly, how these work. This is a decision that the computer has to make. Um, whatever is underneath it is what its action is going to be if this turns out to be a true statement. So it checks if there's a room and that's true. It does the next statement and then it goes on to the next command. Well, if the next command is an else, 
it's going to skip these two things here. So if this is true, it's going to do this one. If, it's, if this turns out to be false, it moves down to the else and checks what's underneath it. Um, in certain circumstances, we'll have several commands under the if and several commands under the else. In that case, you have to add what's called a block and you have to block the commands out like this. And everything that happens when the else gets triggered needs to be inside those blocks. But if there's only one instruction, you don't need it. It doesn't matter. However, it tends to be good form to practice these things. So you can go ahead and put blocks around these just to get into the habit so that uh, when there's an if statement, whatever's inside of the blocks is going to happen if it's true. If it's false, it's going to skip this stuff. And then if there's an else, it'll go ahead and finish these instead of this one. So that's good practice. So let's just do it like that. We're going to work on the person object next. So let's open that up. We need the person object to respond to inputs from the keyboard. When players press the arrow keys, the person object should move around the floor. And also when the player object, uh, person object moves into a wall, we need them to stop moving. Um, we also want them to stop moving if no key is being pressed. Otherwise, they'll, uh, they would continue to move all the way across the screen every time a key was pressed. So here's what we do. Add event. And there's three different keyboard options. There's plain old keyboard, there's key press, and key release. We're going to use plain old keyboard, and that lets you hold a key down, and it lets the instruction be repeated as long as the key is held down. Key press uh, means the instruction only happens once, even if you hold the key down. So if we had used this one, if you tried to hold the left arrow key down, the player would only move one spot, as opposed to continuing to move by holding the key down. So we want to use plain old keyboard. We're going to use the left, right, up, and down arrows. So click left. We'll grab the move fixed action and we'll move them to the left at a speed of four. We're going to repeat that for all of the arrow keys. Moving right at a speed of four. Moving up at a speed of four. Also notice that uh, up ended up in the middle of these two. That doesn't matter. Um, the events don't have to be in any particular order and Game Maker orders them automatically. Why they're different than on this list, I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. So down at a speed of four. Okay, if the player takes the hand off the keyboard, we don't want any movement to happen, so we're gonna add a keyboard event called no key. In the no key event, we want there to be no speed, so we'll put a stop there and speed of zero. Okay. Um, finally, when the player collides with a wall, we want the player to stop. So collision, wall, and we'll do the same thing. Stop. All right. Now, we're actually going to come back and make some changes to this, but for now, I'm going to leave it like that. And we're going to set up a room so I can demonstrate why we need to make some changes. So here's our room, and we'll create, uh, first of all, let's set the grid to 32 by 32. Um, let's paint some walls down. We'll paint these all the way around the room. We'll place a goal object right here and the person object right here. I'm also going to set up um, some walls to move between. So here's sort of a little tunnel for the player to walk through. And uh, that'll help demonstrate what we need to change. So let's test this out. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna use the arrow keys to move around. And notice as soon as I take my finger off the keys, the person stops moving. If I run into a wall, I stop moving. And, um, but here's the problem. It's kind of tricky to get lined up exactly right to go through the tunnel. As I move down this way, I'm not exactly on the grid. So it's a little tricky and you gotta really work at it. That's sort of frustrating. We don't wanna make it, we wanna make it a little better. So let's go back into Game Maker, open this up. What we can do is before the player's allowed to move, we can check to see if they're on the grid. So let's do control and use this one here. This is uh, check the grid. So we're gonna drag that out above the move fixed action. 
And so what we'll do is we'll set the grid to 32 by 32. And now what's happening, it says um, when the player hits the left key, if the instance, meaning the person object, is aligned with the grid, then we'll start them moving. Now since the player begins the game lined up with the, with the grid, uh, that should never be a problem. It should always um, uh, line up that way. Uh, now, on the no key, when they let go, we don't want to let them stop moving until they're lined up. So we'll do the same thing. We'll set this up there and we'll set it to 32 by 32. And that way, if the player tries to stop moving, they'll kind of coast into the next grid spot before they're allowed to stop moving. And then they're ready to move on the next option here. So let's, uh, I'm just going to copy this and we'll go here and paste, paste, and paste. Uh, that should do it. One other thing we're going to change just to avoid any future problems is, oops, I'm sorry, go to the sprite for the person. And we're going to, um, right now the bounding box, the computer thinks the edge of this person is around really close to the drawing, not including this transparent part around the edge. Let's turn off precise collision checking and let's change the bounding box to full image. And that just ensures that there won't be any weird collisions where the player collides with a wall or something halfway along the grid, which would freeze the player and lock them in place. If your player ends up stuck in the game, you may want to go back to your sprite for the person and uncheck precise collision checking and make sure the bounding box is set to full image. That's usually where the problem is. Click OK. And now we'll test this again. And you should see an improvement. Okay, now if I tap the key, you'll see the player moves exactly one square. And so there's actually no way for me to get stuck halfway between. Okay, and then of course if we try out the goal, it restarts the game just like it should. All right, that's version one. Um, good job. We're going to continue on to version two in the next tutorial. We'll add in some extra features to this game.